Welcome to worship. It is November the 15th, 2020. I pray that your worship experience will bring renewal to your heart and mind as you receive Christ's blessings of peace, comfort, hope, and healing through the power of the Holy Spirit. Thank you for joining me and the people of Wardsville and Glencoe Presbyterian Churches as we worship our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. My name is Rev. Deb Dolbear Van Belsen. In community news, a reminder that Operation Christmas Child is in progress and the Christmas shoeboxes can be found online at www.samaritanspurse.ca slash pack a shoebox slash donations of $10 or more may be given online or you may mail to the Calgary address which is on the screen. Tax receipts issued for eligible donations over $20. And this week, National Collection Week, is from November 16th to 22nd. Happy birthday wishes are extended for a happy second birthday to Adrian McGill on the 16th. And he shares his birthday in good company with Megan McGill, Julie McDonald, and Michelle McDonald. And on the 17th, Happy birthday to Ian Ryan. If you're celebrating your birthday or an anniversary this week, we wish you a blessed and wonderful day. Please join me now in our call to worship as it appears on the screen. Wake up, God's presence has called us here. We lift up our eyes and see God's radiant love. Lift up your lives and walk in the light. We lift up our hearts in praise and our voices in song. Open your ears to hear Christ's call. We open our minds to know God's word. Let us worship God. Our opening praise selection is on the screen. You are my all in all.
Let us pray. As your children of light and life, we come to you this day, O God, in worship and praise, in awareness and hope. Shine upon us with the radiant light of your wisdom and your guidance. Keep alive in us the constant awareness that you are present in our lives and in our world, creating your realm of love and salvation. Keep alive in us the enduring hope that your strength and power will overcome the sorrow and sin of this world, as you have shown us through the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus Christ, our Lord and our Savior. Strengthen our faith and resolve us to stay awake, alert, and serious about our call to be children of the light. O God, we confess that we love to make excuses. We make excuses for why we cannot forgive others and why we do not have enough time for you. We make excuses for why we cannot serve your church and why we cannot minister to others. Sometimes we complain that we do not have any talents or gifts to share. And yet, we know you have blessed us abundantly with your forgiveness and love, and you have instilled in us gifts and talents enough to share and time to share them. Forgive us, O Lord, we pray, and free us to serve you and our neighbors. All this we pray remembering the words Jesus taught us to pray as we say together, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Hear these words of assurance. The Lord knows us and our many weaknesses. God loves us just as we are. For we do not have a high priest who is unable to sympathize with our weaknesses but we have one who is in every respect, has been tested as we are, yet without sin himself. Let us therefore approach the throne of grace with boldness so that we may receive mercy and find grace to help in time of need. Thanks be to God. Amen. And here is a little chuckle for your day and a reminder that We can trust God and we put our trust in Him, but He also trusts us to use our abilities and our intelligence. So I hope you enjoy the cartoon. For it is as if our God, going on a journey, summoned Christ's followers and entrusted all of God's earth to them. We are the trustees of all that God has given us. Let us share these gifts in faith and trust, in courage and hope, as signs of light and love. I encourage you today to give what you are able and called to give to your local church that you love, the charity of your choice, or as the Lord leads you to give. Let us pray. Gracious God, you have poured down blessings upon us from your bounty. You have given us food to eat, homes to live in, clothing to wear, and family and friends in which to share. You have also bestowed upon us talents and gifts to be used for your glory. Receive our tithes and offerings so that your work may be done on earth through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And our praise selection will be on the screen. Between us, by the cross you came and broke them down You broke them down And there were chains around us By your grace we are no longer bound No longer bound You called me out of the grave You called me into the light You called my name and then my heart came alive
We're turning to our scripture reading, which is found in Matthew chapter 25, verses 14 to 30. Let us listen to God speak to our hearts. Jesus continues, Again, the kingdom of heaven can be illustrated by a man going on a long trip. He called together his servants and entrusted his money to them while he was gone. He gave five bags of silver to one, two bags of silver to another, and one bag of silver to the last, dividing it in proportion to their abilities. Then he left on his trip. The servant who received the five bags of silver began to invest the money and earned five more. The servant with two bags of silver also went to work and earned two more. But the servant who received the one bag of silver dug a hole in the ground and hid the master's money. After a long time, their master returned from his trip and called them to give an account of how they had used his money. The servant to whom he had entrusted the five bags of silver came forward with five more and said, Master, you gave me five bags of silver to invest, and I have earned five more. The master was full of praise. Well done, my good and faithful servant. You have been faithful in handling this small amount, so now I will give you many more responsibilities. Let's celebrate together. The servant who had received the two bags of silver came forward and said, Master, you gave me two bags of silver to invest, and I have earned two more. The master said, Well done, my good and faithful servant. You have been faithful in handling this small amount, so now I will give you many more responsibilities. Let's celebrate together. Then the servant with the one bag of silver came and said, Master, I knew you were a harsh man, harvesting crops you didn't plant and gathering crops you didn't cultivate. I was afraid I would lose your money, so I hid it in the earth. Look, here is your money back. But the master replied, You wicked and lazy servant, if you knew I harvested crops I didn't plant and gathered crops I didn't cultivate, why didn't you deposit my money in the bank? At least I could have gotten some interest on it. Then he ordered, Take the money from the servant and give it to the one with the ten bags of silver. To those who use well what they are given, even more will be given, and they will have an abundance. But from those who do nothing, even what little they have will be taken away. Now throw this useless servant into outer darkness where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Thanks be to God for his holy and everlasting word. Amen. Last week I asked you the question, are you ready? And the message was entitled, Making Preparations. When the bridegroom arrived late at an unexpected time to go into the wedding banquet, the bridesmaids would be joining him. Half of them were foolish and half were wise. This week we talk about the parable of the talents. The field where that third servant buried his treasure which was what happened in Hellenistic times imagine looking across your field having buried that treasure and remembering where it was and having to go back and find it for your master after a long journey half of the bridesmaids were wise and prepared with a jar of extra oil to keep their lanterns burning while the foolish ones did not come prepared they demanded that the prepared ones give from their oil however they needed to keep their lamps burning and they knew it would require a the full amount. It sounds 
Like the foolish bridema bridesmaids expected the others to give them to them. But what have they been responsible for and accountable for? Do they feel entitled to the jars of oil and upon their return entitled to go into the wedding banquet? After all, when they show up, they say, Sir, sir, open the door for us. It sounds like a demand and a command as though they were exempt from taking responsibility for their own coming and being ill-prepared rather than the foolish bridesmaids seeking forgiveness or mercy they were immune because of and maybe in their own right they thought they deserved all of it maybe they had a certain reputation in society we don't know that possibly they were from a family of wealth we don't know that or they just didn't really care because the bridegroom came late and because they fell asleep, they expected that he would let them in upon their return after going to buy more oil. After all, they were good people, right? But he didn't let them in. He even went so far as to say that he did not even know them. Let me ask you, does God know your name? It's not a trick question. The answer is yes. You were made in God's image. And God knew you before you were even in your mother's womb. Do you, then, the question becomes, know God's name? Are you deeply acquainted with God? Do you know God as your creator? As your eternal parent, your Heavenly Father, do you know Jesus Christ as your Heavenly Father's only Son? Do you know Jesus Christ as your Lord and your Savior, the Prince of Peace, your Redeemer? Is the Holy Spirit living in you and guiding you, guiding your conscience in the way that you love and forgive yourself and the people around you? Or maybe you just can't be bothered, like those foolish bridesmaids. Somebody else can do the work. Right? That's how faith works. Right? Somebody else can believe for you because trusting in yourself, that has worked really well so far. Worked for the foolish bridesmaids until it didn't. That's what happens, I think, with the third servant. And we're not going to say that he was bad. He was being safe. And he didn't want to uh, entrust his money and sink it all in to something else without a, being a sure thing. So what did he do? He did what everybody did in that society. He buried the money. That's what the third servant appears to believe. He believes that he knew his, what his master had done in the past and what his business was all about. He was smart and he knew the whole story about his master. Jesus tells this story to the disciples again, only a few short verses before in the previous chapter, before the bridesmaids, and so in the same conversation, this all is actually happening. When Jesus explains the day and the hour is unknown to people. Therefore, we need to keep watch. And he expands on this so that we can understand who each of the servants is. In chapter 24, we go back to the previous chapter it says but understand this if the owner of the house had known at what time of night the thief was coming he would have kept watch and would not have let his house be broken into so you also must be ready because the son of man will come at an hour when you do not expect him and verse 45 is key here who then is the faithful and wise servant 
whom the master has put in charge of the servants in his household to give them their food at the proper time. Well, it would be good for that servant whose master finds him doing so uh, all this and so uh, so that when he returns he's following what he's committed to jesus says i tell you the truth in other words listen up he will put him in charge of all his possessions but suppose that the servant is wicked and says to himself my master is staying away a, a long time and he then begins to beat his fellow servants, and to eat and drink with drunkards. The master of that servant will come on a day when he does not expect him, and at an hour when he is not aware. He will cut him to pieces and assign him a place with the hypocrites, where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Yikes! Now, now doesn't this sound familiar? Oh yeah, we cannot read one of these passages all by itself without pulling it all together in the same context. Because this is who Jesus is talking to. Otherwise, we would assume a lot about the passage and sometimes people tend to feel sorry for the third servant in our passage today. But the third servant in our passage today is no different than the average person today. Because in the Hellenistic society, one talent weighed between 57 and 74 pounds. And it was worth 15 years wages for a day laborer. And that could be approximately one quarter of a million dollars today. And so where was the best place to hide it? To keep it safe, the safest place was in the ground. In the ground is what everyone did. But that's not what the master wants his servants to do. And we are his servants. We have talents and he doesn't want us to hide them. He doesn't want us to put them in a safe place and keep them the same way throughout our entire life. He wants us to see him and understand him as God. God is the master. And the first two servants were entrusted uh, to, with the amount to their ability. And God knows what our abilities are. He knows what we are capable of. He knows what we can do and he knows how we will use our talents. We're to trust God, not what the world says with our hearts and our possessions, but we are to look beyond the sensible thing because the sensible thing really is the wrong thing to do here. Burying our money. No. Why is it wrong? God's reign manifests itself not in safety, but in surrender. Not in guardedness, but in growth. And so here we find that the servant, the third servant, said he was afraid. I'm afraid, he said. So... Let me continue by saying that Jesus tells all of these things to his disciples to remind them about who we are as servants. The obedient servant is the one who serves from a heart of love for the master and for the people around us and to the other servants. The obedient servant is the one who will be rewarded because no matter when the master returns the servant is leading a life and his assignment from a place of obedient love the servant who obeys and gives the entire amount and doubles it is the one who takes the chance the risk and is not afraid, but follows what 
his masters taught him. And as Jesus' conversation continues, we learn that the first two servants match the definition of a wise servant, and now the master entrusts each servant with possessions in response to their trustworthy actions, to their love for him. Love which is shown as obeying what he asks and what he's done and what he's taught them. The first two servants did not begin to question their master's character or why he was leaving or when he was going to return. They simply, they simply did what they knew their master had done, knowing that their master had always provided for them. The question is, will you live your life being afraid to give everything up to God, whether it's your reputation, uh, your personal talents or abilities, um, your possessions, your heart, your love, or will you choose to be afraid and will you be reluctant to give to God all that's God's and surrender all so that he can multiply it 100 fold? Sometimes it's really hard not to be afraid, especially in the middle of the pandemic, especially when you've been hurt before especially when things maybe haven't worked out the way you thought they would, especially when so many things seem so uncertain. But the one thing that is certain is God's love for us, us and his faithfulness. And if we can just let go of our ego, if we can let go of our reputation, our judgments of others, our judgments of God, and not box God into who we think God is, but allow God to be a God of abundance and spectacular surprises. How much more will God do in our lives using us and our abilities, us and our um, gifts of the Spirit? Because as we receive Christ, we receive the Holy Spirit. And so as we breathe in, we inhale the Spirit of the Lord. As we exhale, we exhale the Spirit of the Lord. The Holy Spirit is ours to lead us, to guide us, to bless us. How will we move forward and no longer say, I'm afraid? Instead, proclaim, I trust Jesus as my Lord. And I'm not looking for security. I'm looking to surrender because I love him and want to obey him. Each of us is God's handiwork. Created in Christ Jesus to do good works that God prepared in advance for us to do. The gifts God gives us are meant to be re-gifted by serving others in His name. This is the one way we serve, the grace He gave us when we help those who are weak and in need, we are blessed with the memory that we too were once weak and in need. This is why Jesus said it is more blessed to give than to receive. So we must decide in our hearts how we give back to God. Not reluctantly or under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver and God will make all grace overflow to us 
He has given us enough of everything in every way at all times. Why? So that we may overflow in every good work we do. To follow Jesus, we must serve Him. And God honors those who serve Him. Faith is risky, but He calls us. So let us answer Him with, I'm ready and I'm not afraid. Thanks be to God. Amen. Let us pray. We thank you, O God, of all life and each life, that you are with us every day in each challenge and opportunity. In our weakness, you are strength. In our darkness, you are light on the journey. In our questions, you are wisdom for our choices. Stay with us in these days when so much seems uncertain throughout this pandemic and all the choices that we have to face each day. Help us to serve you faithfully when and as we're able, Lord. God of loving kindness, we give you thanks for moments of joy and celebration in our lives, even in the midst of this ongoing pandemic. For love given and received, for friendships which bring us meaning and happiness, even at a distance, and for family members who show us glimpses of unconditional love in all our relationships and interactions with others, keep us mindful of your call to see you in one another. Lord, we pray this day for those who are close and dear in our hearts, We give you thanks for the celebration that Bob and Jean Siddle had this past week celebrating 60 years married together. We thank you, Lord, for your steadfast love for all your people. And we remember those who are hurting, those in need of healing, those in need of support. And we remember Chris's brother, Ed, and his family. We pray, Lord, for your mercy and your healing upon this family. God of the nations, we pray for our country and the countries of this world as we struggle to face the choices COVID-19 sets before us. Guide those who frame laws and shape policy, those who keep the peace and administer justice, There are so many new challenges to consider and we pray your wisdom will open our leaders' minds and hearts to develop more equitable ways of ordering our communities. God of peace, we remember with sadness the dangerous divisions between nations and the games leaders play to get the better of each other. By your Holy Spirit, move in places torn by war and violence to protect the vulnerable and those who advocate for justice to prevail. Show us how to be peacemakers in troubled times like these. God of healing, we pray for those who are suffering in these difficult days of the pandemic, for those who mourn the loss of someone or something dear. Draw close to all who fear the future Surround each one with your love and show us how to bring comfort and support into situations of hurt and pain. And God of all life, you hold all souls in your loving care, the dead as well as the living. We thank you for your saints of every age who continue to inspire us and for all who have meant the world to us and now live with you. Keep us in communion with them and at the last, Bring us all to dwell together in your light. All these things we pray in Christ's holy name. Amen. And our closing selection will be on the screen.
Let us go in peace, and may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen. We are marching in the light of God. 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 We are marching, marching, we are marching, oh, we are marching in the light of God. We are marching, marching, we are marching, oh, we are marching in the light of God. We are living in the love 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 of God. We are living, living, we are living, oh, we 